Think about it. Being in Thomas's position, especially for episodes three and seven, I would be upset as well. And Dallas Jenkins has evoked that emotion for a reason. And before I start my review, I want to let you all know, I have an interview dropping this Saturday morning with Catherine Lidstone and Demetrius Troy, who played the remarkable characters of Lazarus and Mary. You don't want to miss it. Hey guys, my name is Joseph Curtis, and if you love movies just as much as me, you have come to the right place. Now do me a huge solid and click that like and subscribe button. Also, if you want to follow me on the following social platforms, that would be great as well. Now, let's start talking The Chosen Season 4, Episodes 7 and 8. We are now in a position with Jesus and the disciples in an emotional state of confusion and reconciliation and potential miracles that are afoot where Jesus is telling his disciples that Lazarus is simply sleeping. I'm going to wake him up. That don't make no sense. Later on with episode eight, it's more of the political sphere of the Pharisees against Jesus and even the Romans and how the Pharisees are trying to find a way to bring death upon Jesus. Not a great plan. This is a fantastic final two episodes. I don't want to say it's probably my favorite. My favorite episode, season finale, still goes to season three, but this one is definitely up there, especially in the sense of what it is leading up to. And when I say what the final shot is, you are going to be left with a huge cliffhanger bigger than Dune Part 1. I'm just kidding. People had to wait three years for that. And by the way, the movie's great. And obviously, this has been in the trailers and even some posters with Lazarus' dead body and even the final moments in the trailer where Jesus says, Lazarus, come out! I do want to let people know, for people who have read the Bible or know nothing about this story, I am going to go into some specifics within these moments. We are plainly seeing the disciples questioning everything, particularly though from Judas and Thomas, doubting Thomas. And you are seeing that character arc being established, especially in episode three and now more so in episodes seven and eight. Absolutely stupendous, beautiful writing from these creators who are making this character feel more real and tangible than ever. And going back to the perspective of the disciples and their bewilderment with what Jesus has said and what he honestly hasn't said to them. There's a beautiful moment where we see peace, understanding, and confusion all in one combo between little James and Mary. It's through this conversation between these awesome characters where you see little James confessing about his pain and how it makes him feel and how he had a great conversation with him in season three, but right now, how everything could change just like that with this moment of Lazarus being raised from the dead. It's the question of what about my pain is something that they are wrestling with. Again, even more so with Thomas at this point where he is ready to die. And then there's Martha and Mary, the sisters to Lazarus, where they are just in utter confusion with this position that they're in. They've sent Jesus a letter. It's been days since he died. Where was he? Where were you, Jesus, says both the sisters, one being a little bit more in the sight of faith and what God can do, but not truly ready to see what God is going to do for them. It's, a, it's an amazing moment how Dallas executes the resurrection scene of Lazarus. Back to the character work, how they tackled the famous verse of Jesus wept is absolutely stunning. It's where Jesus is taken aback and he is falling down to his knees, crying out because of the death of of someone he loves, his friend. But I also take it in a creative way where he's weeping because this moment forward marks the beginning of the end of his journey here on earth to sacrifice himself. And it's his final physical healing in front of people before he starts the Holy Week. This moment that is so integral for the disciples, so integral for the people in Jerusalem, all of Judea, where they're spreading the word. And what side are you going to be on? Overall, this whole sequence is such a genuine look for people who are asking themselves, why can't this happen for me, but it can happen for them? A great line that happens during this moment is Jesus when he says, whoever believes in me will never die. You turn to John, who's writing down the words. Obviously, we see those words in the book of John. And it's a really cool, funny shout out moment. He looks up in visible confusion. Oh, and Thomas is pissed like pissed off and rightly so and i brought this up in the beginning of the video because it's this idea of when we read 
people in the word. We sometimes think that we're better than them and that we would never react that way because that's Jesus. Why would you ever miss the mark? And to tell the truth, and I'm not going to call anybody out, I'm going to call myself out, I miss the mark every single day. And for Doubting Thomas, his nickname, this further cements his arc. As we go into the finale, things are moving forward, especially for the plans of the Pharisees and their plot to kill Jesus. It's also intriguing how Dallas has certain characters that are on the hopeful side, that believe in Jesus and his cause, or at least want to believe and are seeking proof. The one thing Dallas Jenkins, I think, doesn't get enough credit for is the political intrigue and how he tackles it in this series, where we see the planning and conspiring within the sides of the Romans and Pharisees, how it benefits both parties to see the death of Jesus. The thing that really disturbs me about this arc is how on the religious side, they are actually the ones who are bringing out the idea of, hey, Romans, you should kill this guy for us because it's going to help you, but it's also going to help us and help all of the land bring peace. Insane how that side, the religious side, the one that is seeking God, is the one that is trying to kill God. Also in these moments, a quick shout out to the characters of Claudia and Joanna, who both play the wives of governing officials, one being the wife of Pilate. Both show their wisdom, frustration, and sadness in a particular moment in the evening where they're talking about the reality of where things are gonna go with this Nazarene. And the only critique that I have with this season so far is that there were moments that genuinely were good, but what happens is they do overstay their welcome, where it genuinely felt like it was going to end. It was like, yeah, that's really solid. Oh, you're going to keep on talking. It kind of dilutes the impact of the scene that's happening, but it happens few, far in between, so it's not a huge complaint. It's just a minor critique. Overall, this season was an amazing display of what death can do to people, the beauty of it, and the horror of it where we see even the disciples questioning the authority of God, Jesus. But also on the flip side, people fully buying into what Jesus is all about, even on the Pharisee side. Bottom line, this season was a fantastic character study and setup for what is to come in season five. With that said, I'm going to give the chosen season four a solid nine out of 10. Now, before I go, I want to give a shout out to The Chosen. Thank you so much for sending me this entire series. I have just been eating it up. And for the people that are listening who have may have never watched The Chosen, and if you're interested, right now you can stream The Chosen on Netflix, Amazon Prime, and most importantly, all of seasons one through three are available on The Chosen app. So... Get to binging if you're trying to get caught up for season four when it becomes available to stream. Don't forget to buy your tickets right now for tonight's showing, episodes seven through eight. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this review. It really means a lot. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, don't forget to be blessed.